Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamehardguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer creating a vector Dachshund brush. So I'm going to create a Dachshund, turn it into a vector brush and play around with it. I started out by finding a reference image. I lock that and set the opacity to really low and use that as the base for my design. I like to lock a layer or an object in the layer panel to avoid accidentally selecting or moving it. So in this case, the dark sound stays in place while I create the shapes on top of it. I create a new layer on top that will hold all the design elements and start with the rectangle. This part will be repeated or stretched along the vector line once this is turned into a brush. I duplicate the rectangle and move it to the back and another duplicate to the front and convert those to curves. Then I can go in with the node tool and add more detail. You can do the tracing with the pen tool if you feel more comfortable with it. I just wanted the connection between the center part and the front and back to be pixel perfect. That's why I just duplicated that and went in with the node tool to create additional nodes. And you can select multiple nodes and just smooth them to get a nice round feel. Holding Alt while working with the Node tool allows me to easily change the smooth points back to sharp points. For the ear, I start with an ellipse, convert it to curves and use the Node tool to deform it. You can achieve the same thing with the pen tool. I just find it easier sometimes to work with base shapes and deform them and work with the node tool. I use the pen tool for the mouse and the nose. Add another circle for the eye. Work through the elements that are needed to define this design. Quite often you can recycle elements, like in this case I can take the feed from the front, move them to the back and alter them to match the reference image. For the tail I use the pen tool with a thicker stroke, which has a pressure curve to taper towards the tip of the tail. With all the base elements in place, I flip the stroke to a fill color and adjust those elements that need a little tweaking. I adjust the colors and expand the stroke for the tail. I move the line for the mouse into the head shape making it a child object in a clipping mask to contain the front end of the line. I add a gradient to the ear and a duplicate of the ear as the shadow shape to make the ear stand out more. Using the pen tool I draw a base shape for the shadow. In this case the light comes from the top so I want a shadow shape below. I draw across all three shapes the head the center and the tail. Working inside the clipping mask of the head, I will then copy the shape and paste it into the two other parts. Duplicating shapes, coloring them lighter and placing them inside the original as a child object in the clipping mask is a quick way to create shading.
For the highlight, I just use a line that is tapered towards the end via the pressure curve. I convert the centerpiece to a curve and curve it on each side to make sure that the parts overlap and we don't have any gaps in between. And there we have our vector version of the duck sound. Now all we need to do is create a PNG from that. Select all elements, go to file, export and select PNG. Select selection only as the area and I give it a width of 512 pixels which should be big enough. Now that we have the PNG file let's create a texture image brush. Go to the brush panel, select an existing category or create a new one. Click on the menu item and select new texture image brush. Select your PNG file and the new brush should be at the bottom of the list. Let's quickly test it, draw a line with the pen tool, assign the brush and the result is rather warped. By default Affinity Designer stretches the design along the length of the vector line. By changing the body from stretch to repeat we get a lot of little duck sounds which is a nice design but not what I'm after. So let's alter that and assign the beginning and the end of the brush the tail being the beginning and the head being the end. You can change the brush width to make it a little bit bigger by default. You can adjust the size variation which will work in a pressure curve. Setting the body to repeat and defining the beginning and end are the important parts. So let's close this one and see what happens when we play with this new brush. Let's make it a little bit bigger. With this one we had a color selected. If you set it to transparent, no fill, no stroke, it will take the colors of the original PNG file. As you can see I can now play with the curve, changing the location, changing the angles. The head and the tail will stay intact. They might get morphed a little bit depending on the angle of the beginning and the end notes. Overall they stay true to the brush design. It is a fun little effect and I'm sure you can come up with a lot of animals or other designs where this effect will be really cool. If you like this tutorial please subscribe to my channel, like the video, leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see in my blog or on this channel and I'll see you again soon.